Hey everyone, welcome to my fifth class of um, Relax into Sensuality, Your Adventure in Purity. I am so um, in awe of the five weeks that I have experienced growth while doing these videos. So thank you for showing up and being interested and um, growing alongside me. It's been um, a lot of discomfort. I've not been in my comfort zone with this. Um, and it's also been a lot of um, just excitement, really neat, fulfilling experiences. Um, and I hope that today, by the end of, of this video, you will be even more committed to creating those fulfilling experiences for yourself so that you can fully embody sensuality. Um, if we go back to the definition of sensuality, uh, that was a big surprise to me. Sensuality is not just about sexual pleasure, but that is a piece of it. Sensuality is experiencing, um, experiencing pleasure with all of our senses, utilizing our senses to experience pleasure. And it is also um, experiencing sexual pleasure. And uh, this week, you may have seen my post a couple days ago, but... I had a huge breakthrough. I've been experiencing a lot of grieving because of this breakthrough, but I realized that I, at some core level, do not believe that I deserve to experience pleasure or that my life should be easy. It was, it was both pleasure and ease together. Um, and this belief, I am realizing, has blocked me from my core uh, purpose and mission in life in a lot of huge ways. For me, when, I, when something is easy, and I like it, so it brings me pleasure, I am embodying radiance. And radiance is one of my absolutely core values that um, it's a part of who I am. And if something is easy and brings me pleasure, I live in my core. If something is not easy but it brings me pleasure, I'm not in my core. If something is easy but it's not that enjoyable I'm not in my core but if it is those two things I am in my core truest self so but I don't believe that I it's it's like this alarm goes off it says you're bad you're bad Melissa if you experience pleasure and ease and um and I don't think I'm alone in this um and I find it very fascinating. Where on earth did we get the idea that we are not supposed to really enjoy things? Um, I'm going to post right here the definition of pleasure. It, it was different than what I thought it would be. Um, you know, basically like enjoying something and feeling happiness about something. There is the verb aspect of pleasure, which literally refers to like sexually giving someone enjoyment or fulfillment. Um, but the, um, the word itself really just revolves around like enjoying life. And when I really, really allow myself to enjoy something, I feel guilty as ever. This is kind of stupid story, but it was really defining for me. Um, CJ and I, my husband and I, we were just barely newly wed, and we were, um, we may have even been dating at the time. We were sitting at a kitchen table. I don't know if we were at our house or where we were. And I bought a mango, and I was sharing a mango with him. And I hadn't bought a mango in a few years, and I loved mangoes. They totally were nostalgic for me. I used to eat them with my Aunt Dawn out on the ranch. And um, she's the one who introduced me to mangoes. And anyway, like eating this mango. And I was not, uh, I was not worried about what he thought of me or whatever. I like, I, I was so comfortable with him. I was just totally into the mango and I was like making noises and I was like 
just eating the mango completely unaware of what I was doing you guys and I looked up at one point and CJ's looking at me like really like really <laughs> I was so mortified I was like oh my gosh I should never eat a mango again. I should never eat a mango like that again. I should always be on guard. What was I thinking? Um, fully allowing myself to enjoy a mango. What was I thinking? I felt so much shame about enjoying a mango. <laughs> I can see clearly what happened for me. That was not the beginning of this cycle. That was merely one trigger point in the middle of this cycle that has played out for me forever. Um, and I was, I was talking with a friend today, thinking about my little toddler. She like has very few words and she's so sweet and innocent and she just wakes up every morning and life for her is all about pleasure and ease. And if she doesn't, if something doesn't bring her pleasure or something's not easy for her, she lets us know about it. She starts crying and she screams until she gets what she wants. That's what babies do, right? Um, I'm like in awe. Like, oh yeah, I used to do that too. We all did, right? And now what do I do when something is hard or when something doesn't bring me pleasure? I'm like, nose to the grindstone, keep it all together. Um... And then I just like accept it. It's like, well, this is the way life is supposed to be. Life is hard. Right? Um, I think I deserve a hard life. I think that's what I think I deserve. <laughs> um, I think we do that to ourselves until we can consciously choose something else. So I mentioned there's been a lot of grieving for me with this process. The thing for me that I'm realizing about being a sensual woman, a sensual being and fully embodying my own sensuality is that I have to let my feelings flow. This stuff, it brings up feelings, lots and lots of feelings. And again, I go back to reminding myself, Melissa, you are a warrior. And as hard as it was for me to learn how to stuff myself into this little like ball that I thought I was supposed to be, I need to use that same warrior strength to allow myself to actually be me and be free of that um, stifled ball. And in order to do that, I have to feel my feelings. Um, and I'm so grateful. My friend Dion really showed me that again today because as I was processing through this I was still feeling so stuck and she reminded me like have you taken the time to like really have compassion for yourself so I want you to bring up um uh one of the main feelings that this brings up for you um whether you're looking at um you feel guilty I, maybe let's do that think about the last time that you experienced pleasure any kind of pleasure at all um, where you really felt it and think about how you feel about that experience um, so I want you to go to that place I hope hopefully you've come up with with something um, and notice what feelings come up for you and when I talk about feelings I'm talking about um, even place your hand on your heart. We tend to want to just talk out what we're feeling, which usually leads to more judgments and evaluations. I'm talking about core feelings. Um, like talking about this brings tension in my shoulders. I feel tense, just tense in general. It doesn't help that it's cold outside, but <laughs> I feel, um, I feel anxiety and then when I think about the fact that I've 
not allowed myself to experience pleasure. I feel really sad. I feel really sad about that. So when I'm letting myself feel my feelings, I just identify those feelings. If you need to print out a feelings list from the internet, and I'm not kidding you, I've done that. So I just look at what feelings I'm feeling. I close my eyes. I keep my hand on my heart so I can stay in my feelings and not in my head. And then I start to notice how my body feels. I start to notice my breath most of all. And I use my breath to kind of go to the different areas of tension. And I just sit with my feelings. No judgment at all. This is what I'm feeling. If I begin to notice that I'm feeling judgment, I try and accept that too. I try and just accept it all. Just accept it all. And I'll begin to um, think of yourself as a vessel where they can just flow in and flow out. They may stay for a while. They may go quickly. It's okay. Um, so, so again, we're sitting with our feelings. And then just notice when you begin to feel like, I'm all done with feeling this feeling. And that's great. And then the, the feeling part of this can be over. The whole idea is to open yourself up to be a channel of flow. Because a sensual being has to flow. The sensations are always flowing in and flowing out. Um, whether it's touch or smell or taste or hearing or seeing. Um, it's a constant process of giving and receiving. And if we are just stuffing our all of our emotions in that little ball that we think we're supposed to be, this tiny little ball... Um, our senses are blocked. Our physical senses are blocked and we cannot embrace our sensuality. So our, our emotions help to create this flowing channel so that we can be a sensual being. <sighs> Just like my daughter. She's upset. She cries. Just like that. You know, what do they say? Zero to a hundred? Just like that. And then when she when she gets what she wants, I pick her up or I nurse her or whatever. Just like that. It's over. Um, she's a constant conduit. Okay. So, um... One last thought is that ease and pleasure are just two things that we experience attached to um, different uh, experiences in our life. They're just two things we experience. Um, we, in the quickening coaching, we call them values. They are values. And is ease good? Is ease bad? That's not really something you can argue. Is pleasure good? Is pleasure bad? It's really not something you can argue. So it's not good or bad. It, they just are. They are things that we experience. And we, um, we get to choose how often we want to experience them. We get to choose if we want our life to be hard all the time. Or if we want to create ease and pleasure. Um, and... I want to create ease and pleasure, and I hope that you do too. But again, as we as we like practice with this, I want to just invite you. Your challenge for this week will be to look for things that bring you pleasure and ease, and just feel into that. See if you can ask yourself, okay, is experiencing pleasure in this moment good or bad? And notice that there's like a hundred different explanations for both sides. And invite yourself, okay, maybe it's not good or bad. Maybe it just is. Do I want to choose pleasure right now or not? 
And then again, if you have feelings come up around this, do just pull this video back up. Do just what we did, where you allow your feelings to just flow. Place your hand on your heart, focus on your breathing, and you just become a channel for feelings. They come in, they go out, you may cry, you may have um, other, other reactions to the feelings, but ultimately, they're just feelings. They don't determine anything. And neither do these values. I am not pleasure, I am not ease, but I get to choose if I want to experience those or not. And so do you. I can't wait to hear your experience this week. Thanks so much.